back out and tend his sheep, nobody sees you out there. So a lion comes to attack the sheep, takes the lion out privately. Nobody knows, wasn't nobody there. A bear comes, takes the bear out. Don't nobody know? So he has private victory. No, when I said nobody knows, somebody knew? God. God was like, that's, look, you trusted me to take out a lion and a bear? You're approved. In God's eyes, setting them up for what? Goliath, public triumph. And he was able to take Goliath out. David wasn't even like, oh, I'm sweet. I got this dog. He wasn't even rolling like that. David showed up. He's bringing food. He's serving again. He, he showed up bringing food and was like, you know, bringing food to the people eating, serving. And he hears Goliath talking trash about God. He said, whoa, 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 why y'all letting him? Because y'all supposed to be God's elite soldiers. Why y'all letting a dude talk about God like that? And he saw the fear. He was like, oh, so, so we just going to allow this? Like he lost his focus on the food. He was like, oh, no, well, if y'all just going to sit here, I mean, I'll go out there and fight him. Because, no, the same God that gave me the private victory will give me the public triumph. Oh, no, no, God was with me through a lion and a bear. So I know this dude ain't got nothing. So I'm good. I go out there. I don't know nothing. I, all I got is stones. I'm not, I don't, you know, I no swords, spears, and all the stuff that y'all use. I just work with the stones, which was more than enough. See, so wilderness, all this... Behind the scenes, you think God's going to keep you behind the scenes? He told you to let your light shine. But, but he knows that light is not going to shine when he puts you on a platform if you don't embrace the, the, the private victories. The unseen training and discipline. So No, no, not when you're sitting around at the crib and nobody's watching and you're compromising. That's called private defeat. So private defeat is going to facilitate what? Public defeat. He says, if you can't do it in private, what makes you think you're going to do it on a public platform? He bringing his best at you then. Nobody around and you can't win. You going to win with everybody around? You can't sing in the shower, but you're going to sing on stage. Now, I just don't want, it's, it's, I mean, the, the ceramic, man, is dogging me out. You know, every time I open my mouth, ceramic, boo, boo, terrible. Get her off the stage. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? So if you can't do it privately, how are you going to do it publicly? That, see, so, so now, now we, it gives you a better gauge to what's happening in the unseen in your life. The unseen has the greatest weight. That's what's affecting the scene. What you're doing in the unseen. The Bible says God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance. The Bible says God sees your goings. Your comings and your goings. So, so you may roll up on somebody looking good and like, surely they'll give me the promotion. God is tapping that person on the shoulder to go, I wouldn't do that if I was you. <laughs> now, this, now, this dude's a loser. But you're like, nah, nah, I see him. Look like he look like a winner to me. Yeah, look like a winner to you. Talk like a winner to you. Act like a winner to you. Trust me. That's a loser. They did what they're weak in their integrity. In the core of themselves, they're weak. So when you put them on that platform and the best come at them, they're gonna break because their foundation is weak. The unseen is weak. Look at a building. And it could look good. But if that foundation is weak, it could be cracking the whole time. You wouldn't even know it. Like, uh, what is it, uh, uh, what is it the, in, in Minnesota, whatever the football field was called, I forgot what it was. Uh, it was Metrodome or something like that. But the, the whole ceiling collapsed through snow. It was collapsing before the day it collapsed. They couldn't see it was weak. And eventually it caved in. When you see these men and women of God falling, you think they fell that day? No, they fell in their preparation of their private preparation. So, so when they got on their public platform, they kept growing. Just like you build a building with a weak foundation. Like this building right now. This building, 
let's say it was designed for two stories. There's at least two stories here. So let's say we, 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 we blowing up. We're going to add a story to it. People going to drive by. Man, they put another story on that building. Airs, uh-oh, they had three levels. Then we build another level on top. Airs, four levels. The whole time, the foundation is cracking. But when you drive by, you go, man, I remember it was just two levels on that. They got four levels up in that piece. That's an awesome looking building. They're blowing up. They, they must have a whole lot of people. I heard the sanctuary is four levels high. The ceiling is up to the sky. Boy, I'm going to that church. Five levels. We all in here jumping and shouting. Boom, the whole place came in. Did it cave in that day? It was already weak. So it looked on the outside like it was growing, like those people you see growing, like some of us have grown on the outside, but the whole time the foundation is weak, you think you're going to get over, but your weakness will always be revealed. Just like your strength will. That's why the wilderness See, that's why God wants you to know what's really in your heart, not to disqualify you, but to qualify you. Because once you know what's in your heart, then now you, what's exposed can be helped. What's not exposed can't be helped. So now you can go, okay, now you have something to really offer before the Lord. Now you have something to really present as a living sacrifice under God. Something that's genuine and true, is authentic. And God said, oh, I can take you. I can resurrect you from there because you're dead. But you're presenting yourself alive. You don't need resurrection, right? You're good, right? You don't need me to resurrect you, to touch you with my power in my life. You don't need no resurrection power because you've resurrected yourself. Right? Oh, y'all, y'all don't want to hear all that, but it's true. All right, so so it's, it's, it puts you in a place where you have the ability to accomplish what God called you to do as opposed to settling for, settling for what they say you can do. See, God has designed you for something. And that's what's frustrating us in our lives. You know, I, I think about this a lot because I, I deal with it a lot. Like, like the, 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 I was going to say the fakeness, but how, how we, we, we work hard to not be in reality. And then we try to bind other people up with that. You know, like, like we work hard to not deal with the truth about where we are in our lives. And so, so if I tell you the truth, you're offended as opposed to thanks. Because now that, that I can work on that, you know, in my private time to elevate. Now it's like, what you trying to say? Or what, he was saying, uh, he says uh, in the class he's taking, they was talking about how worldviews and how the media introduces things. So how... Uh, They'll introduce something that says, okay, that's derogatory, stuff we've been saying the whole time. So we, we may, you know, we may call a hoe a hoe, but that's derogatory, you know, now, even though the Bible talks about a whore. So he was saying how they, uh, they call it something else now. I'm not trying to get into all of the media stuff, but he said they call it something else. So he was watching a show on TV, and they had changed the name from, I, I'm using the word whore, that's not what they usually do, but they changed the name. So, so they don't want to deal with reality. So what? They, they made it more comfortable. See, so the, the world makes it more comfortable for you to do that which is keeping you out of the presence of God. Keeping you from fulfillment. So after a while, you'll go, oh, good. Somebody's in agreement with what I'm doing to make it more comfortable. So it's okay. <laughs> I don't have to change. I don't have to be disciplined. I don't have to, to be sanctified. I can just ride this out. The whole time, they're, 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 they're putting you in a place where you're going to crash. Because when the, the Bible says everything hidden shall be revealed. Everything, not some things. So when it's exposed, you're like, oh, wow. So I got to work on this. But now you've been 20 years embedded. So now you're going to be depressed because like, Man, this is too much. This is too far. And see, for me, I'm not, I'm not as merciful. You know, y'all, pastor, you're supposed to be merciful. Well, the reason why I'm not as merciful because I'm like, you got what you want. You trained everybody to convince and convince everybody that it's okay. Don't talk about this. Don't bring this up. You put, don't put me down. I'm a work in progress. So you've convinced everybody not to say nothing. So it's almost like Jedi mind trick. I'm not what you see. You, oh, okay. That is not reality. You know, if, if you're lazy, you're lazy. If you're undisciplined, you're undisciplined. 
If you're afraid, you're afraid. Now let's work on it. But you don't see fear. Oh, okay. Thought I saw fear, look like fear, smell like fear, act like fear. Maybe I'm tripping. No, they're not tripping. You are. Because you're not embracing the reality. Not, not as a put down, but just I want to change, right? So I got to face what, what, what I need to change with. It. It's going to hurt a little bit, but it hurts living with it. Because every time you're having a good time, it'd be tapping you on your shoulder. Oh, you know I'm still here, right? You're watching a movie, and somebody in the movie is going through what you're hiding. You're like, man, you're having, hey, let's go out to the movies. Great idea. Let's have a good time. Oh, this is so special. We're spending time to get. What's the matter, man? I'm okay. No, I'm good. It's just a touching scene. No, you, you're being reminded of. Almost like the average is going, oh, you think you're going to have a good time today? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm creeping up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what you've ignored. Because we do stuff like this. These are the keys. What keys? There's no keys. What? Key, key, what key? There is no keys. You see some keys? So, so because I put the keys behind there, they don't exist? Yes, they do. Just because they're not out in the open don't mean they're not there. See, the wilderness exposes all that stuff. And some of you are already living through it, so it's just confirming why today. That's all we're doing, just confirming. So it teaches us how to discern uh, whether the Lord alone sustains our spiritual life. And that's where we draw our calling and our purpose and our dreams from, or are we just faking it? We just make believe, making up stuff. So the wilderness is gauging, has this come from God or is this just something you're mimicking from man? Does this come from God or is this, you know, you was doing this this week, I, uh, we were talking about, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who was playing basketball and his, he was talking about his son was going to the military. Then later on in the conversation, he says, yeah, well, you know, last year he was thinking about going to this college. Then later on in the conversation, he says, well, what he was thinking about doing, I said, your son doesn't know what he wants to do. I said, and he's afraid. He's in his senior year, and he's afraid because all this time he has kind of danced around God. Now he needs God, but he doesn't know how to connect with God. So now he's just going by what everybody's saying. So he was hanging out with some friends. I told you he was hanging out with some friends last week that was going to the military. Week before, people was talking about going to college. The week before that, they was talking about, oh, you can get this job and start this business. So now he's just flowing with everybody because he's afraid and he doesn't know who to talk to and he doesn't have a strong relationship with God who has all the answers to what he designed him to do. Now, that's a young version of what older people do all the time. God is the answer. He designed you. Who else are you going to talk to? He has the, the plans, the design. You're fearfully and wonderfully made by him, not by your cousin. Not by your boys. So, so that's why we got to get to so the wilderness puts us back connected to why we're here in the first place. It determines the wilderness ter- determines our validation and the significance for to te- for uh, it determines the validation for our significance today uh, and determines the qualifi- qualifications of God's platform for tomorrow. So in the wilderness, you see where your validation really is. Because sometimes our significance is in what mom and dad say, what our cousin said, uh, what the family has always done. You know, as opposed to our significance should be in what God is saying. There's a book by Robert McGee called The Search for Significance, and it'll show you how sometimes we're so uh, uh, compliant, uh, we don't realize we're, we're, we just please men. So even when, when God tells us something to do, we're like, okay, I gotta make sure mom approves, or dad approves, or cousin Jimmy approves. You know, as opposed to God just told you. I got to make sure the, the preacher approves. No, God just told you. So, so it tells you where your significance is because you'll be on a momentum and, and somebody that you give more significance to God will come up and go, why would you do something like that? And you'd be like, yeah, why would I? I don't know what I was thinking. That's just crazy. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. I don't know what I was thinking. Why I was going to do that. I, I'm not doing that. That's stupid. But God just told you. But because it takes so much faith to step out. <laughs> 